Hello there. I have to apologize for not making so many videos this week, but I've been insanely busy. Like, busy beyond belief. But at least I got the deed to my free land. Yes, indeed. I had all those stamps and accoutrements and tax collectors' numbers on there and everything else that's relational um, to having something to do with the government. Anyway, I made a few, actually I made probably four or five videos on the incommensurability of water, uh, specifically in a very short rehash on what was mentioned previously. Water is the only geometry in the entire universe, yeah, molecular geometry, that has the incommensurability within it. Complete perfect and by perfect i mean that literally literally geometrically and mathematically perfect um, symmetry of uh, incommensurability it's that same triangle however it's upside down tattooed on the back of my hand um people have uh, intelligently however inaccurately and without forethought said well if you type in a uh, google search on the uh, on the angles of water, you'll come out, some say 104, some say 105. What they're doing is that they're doing, uh, is measuring it from the theoretical uh, centers of the atoms, respectively, of the oxygen and the uh, two hydrogen atoms, but, you know, they're measuring it at the incorrect place. I mean, that's where science is assuming theoretical um, symmetry of the water molecule, but measuring it from the outside of the actual valences or the uh, the uh, interatomic geometry measured in picometers of the respective atoms of the oxygen and hydrogen. So it is the 108, 36, 36 angle. As you see here, this specific geometry and triplicate makes up the Pythagorean pentagram. Perfect, undeniable incommensurability. It is also too undeniable, undeniable. Wow, I've had a long day that uh, water is uh, necessary for consciousness and life to manifest. I used to be a ham radio operator. I made a lot of antennas and studied antenna theory. Um, I made a, a big, uh, to me anyway, an important uh, discovery as to the nature of uh, water that I'll get to here in a few minutes. But I've known this for many years, however, that uh, water is a fractal antenna, perfect in its uh, incommensurability and symmetry of same. I don't know if you know anything about fractal antennas. You can actually do a Google search. Just type in fractal um, antennas. Uh, fractal antennas are not only multispectral as far as their receiving capability, but they also, too, have a higher gain across a broader spectrum of EMR. And also, too, a lot smaller. What you do, what you have in a very, very simplex design is a compact antenna that's able to receive a wider spectrum of EMF, um, electromagnetic frequency radiation, for reception with a higher gain, but also, too, across a broader spectrum. So not only is it smaller, but it has better gain, better receptivity, and uh, something that has perfect geometric incommensurability. In, uh, in Wow, I almost need to start over and make this video again. <laughs> that is what happens when you go to bed at 6 o'clock in the morning, right? It's so busy. Literally been up to 5 and 6 o'clock in the morning. Perfect incommensurability as far as the water molecule goes. Water is the universe's only perfect incommensurable uh, geometry and fractal antenna for life to exist. That's not my view or speculation. It's an undeniable fact. Um, consciousness itself is only tunable with this uh, geometry. Water, of course, in a crude analogy, would be the antenna, and the body, of course, and the ta of course, most of the body is water. What is it? The percentage of uh, the body being uh, water. I forget the exact percentage, but obviously without water, any body is just a collection of, uh, looks like the uh, um, dust inside your vacuum cleaner bag, just a small little pile of dust. So. Some will say, like I said, that the water molecule is only very close to that 108-36-36 uh, geometry, but it actually is that perfectly. Depends on where, of course, the water molecule is being measured. Water also, too, is a dipolar. This is not my view. All of science agrees on this fact, by the way. Water is a dipole molecule. It is a dipole molecule. 
Very interesting. Xenelium water is a dipole molecule. It's the basis for all life, and it's the only geometric molecule in the entire universe that has perfect Pythagorean incommensurability. And if I took a Sharpie marker, which I don't have a Sharpie marker here, but I would draw in the back of my hand, I'd just draw an oxygen atom here and a an hydrogen atom here and a an hydrogen atom over here. That's the reason why I have this tattooed on the back of my hand. This is the secret of the Pythagoreans. By the way, the secret of the Pythagoreans, the only true secret, and this is by their own words, I forget the exact citation, that the only great secret of the Pythagoreans, which they did not release freely to people, was the secret of incommensurability. There's the reason why, and of course, latter-day occultists and the New Age movement, they all adapted the pentagram, you know, with their own nefarious uh, symbolism. You know, they would look at it and they would actually see the beautiful, uh, the beautiful uh, nature and its symmetry, and uh, they always associated with occult. But of course, in medieval days and in the early uh, and late hundreds of uh, post-Christianity, anything that was not Christianity was occult. So true, hardcore, logical, wise, methodical uh, Platonism, Pythagoreanism, the teachings of uh, Plotinus, Syrianus, Demetrius, Proclus, Numenius, uh, Iamblichus, on and on and on. The people of great wisdom and insight, that was occult. So it's, of course, no uh, consideration to draw the undeniable conclusion that uh, you know this is now an occult symbol, but its original um, um, order of uh, where it was located at was in, uh, and of course we don't know who before the Pythagoreans, um, the Pythagoreans and their secret of incommensurability, the secret knowledge, which of course then became the occult and uh, this new age movement with which I have no connection with whatsoever, I have no love for that sector, uh, like if you go to a bookstore and you look in the New Age section, or the Metaphysics section, excuse me, you'll see nothing but a bunch of, you know, weird, uh, you know, white light or crystal rubber stuff. I have no connection to any of that. I don't make any connection. I disdain any connection of myself to or with that stuff. But there's also, too, a reason why the ancient oracles, especially Egyptian ones, would immerse themselves in uh, pure bodies of uh, spring water. It increased their sensitivity for divine inspiration. How many of us, and I know you are one, if you're listening to this, you know it has happened to you when you're in the shower, you're taking a bath, and you uh, let your mind wander to this uh, non-local um, place of seeking out answers to things in general, things in specific. They kind of pop into your head. There's a reason why we get inspired when we're in the shower, we're soaking in the tub. I actually uh, had the same thing to myself. I'm always uh, seeking out answers to things. That uh, And it was so blatant because, as is with everything in Mother Nature, it is blatantly staring us in the face and it's glaringly obvious, but we're too myopic uh, to see it, that water not only, in addition to everything that I've said, and I've said that before in other videos, is the only geometric cross-section, the only perfect geometric cross-section, I don't have my piece of chalk here, only perfect geometric cross-section uh, of both the hyperboloid and the Taurus. Let me repeat that again because that's my discovery and I'm mad at myself for not realizing this years ago. And of course you actually take this uh, Pythagorean, let me eliminate out the angles here and whatnot, there we go. We take this uh, perfect Pythagorean geometry and this of course would be the cross section of uh, not only uh, center but throw of the hyperboloid or the hourglass shape, you could actually mirror that on this side. Or if you actually take it like this and you mirror it inverse like this, we have the perfect uh, geometric incomm uh, incommensurability of uh, the torus. And of course, as I've said many countless times in many different videos, the torus and the hyperboloid are the good conjugate geometries specifically of force and motion, inertia and acceleration, i.e. the geometry of the entire universe, i.e. of centrifugal divergence and of centripetal convergence. By the way, the negative image of a hyperboloid is a torus. The negative image of a torus is a hyperboloid. The superimposition of both, of course, is a sphere. Yeah, there's a reason why the Earth's magnetosphere is donut shaped. There's a reason why the uh, galactic magnetosphere, which there is a galactic magnetosphere, is of course toroidal. And of course, at the center of which there is nothing. There is, well, it's not literally nothing. Uh, we know there's a supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy and of most galaxies. I mean, I'm in complete agreement with everything that uh, astrophysicists say about what is at the center of our galaxy. But getting back to water, 
That specific geometry, which is also tattooed on the back of my hand and is the basis for all life, that which makes life possible, that which is the true antenna of consciousness, and by the way, that is true. The antenna of consciousness, of the consubstantiality between matter and spirit, I don't care if you use the word spirit, I don't care if you use the word soul, it doesn't make any difference what words human beings use. That geometry is the only perfect incommensurable geometry of both the apex and the max throw, whether it be centripetal or centrifugal, of both the torus and the hyperboloid. That is an observation that I'd never considered before. It's blatantly obvious, it's insanely important, and no one else has ever seen that before or mentioned it anywhere, I know that for a fact. Um, that's incredibly important. You might find that to be completely irrelevant information. That ties everything in together. It's not like a missing puzzle piece of a larger picture, but it essentially is. That specific geometry, and it should have been blatantly obvious to me before, that is the only geometry that fits perfectly within the apex and the max throw of toroidal field geometry and of hyperboloidal field geometry, respectively the geometry of force and motion, inertia and acceleration, the conjugate geometry of the dielectric and of magnetism, which is the conjugate geometry of absolutely everything in the universe, from macro to micro. There is only that geometry, and that's the Pythagorean triangle, the 108, 36, 36 triangle of perfect incommensurability. By, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned that in this video. I have in many others at that specific triangle. This one here, in triplicate, if you actually rotate it three times along that specific axis of incommensurability, you end up with the Pythagorean pentagram. The Pythagorean pentagram is just composed of three of these triangles. That's all the Pythagorean pentagram is. Everybody that like wears pentagrams and they have it, uh, you know, drawn, have posters of it, they, they, they can't tell you anything about it. It's like, oh yeah, that's... And everybody in our conventional world, of course, associates that with the occult. Well, we have to define the original meaning of occult, as I said about 10 minutes ago. And that is that anything that was not of an Abrahamic religious center, well, that's the occult. Like, even hardcore metaphysics and logic and wisdom of Aristotelian, Platonic, and others, I mean, that was deemed and still is deemed, even if it's subliminally, occult. So, they're not, that's not connected to this white light or new age movement. Not, but those people adopted that symbol. Well, this is an occult symbol, it's Pythagorean parent. No, it's... Anyway, we end up with uh, connotation and denotation in referencing that specific geometry. But, um, it's also too important to mention that one of the primary reasons why people today are so insane and this is an undeniable fact. I don't know if you know this or not. It's 100% undeniable. If human beings had the ability to see, truly see, and we, of course we can only see, you know, a super, super tiny slice of visible uh, light EMR. Yeah? Very, very tiny. If human beings could see the insane bombardment from their cell phones, uh, you know, like satellite uh, transmitters, GPS transmit, there's so much stuff in space that's beaming. Of course, it's low energy. It's only uh, five watts like on a Dish Network or, uh, or uh, any other satellite TV, but there's now, of course, uh, satellite internet. There's all sorts of Broadcom uh, signals. There's cells, uh, cell, uh, cellular node networks. We are bomb being bomb uh, regular conventional TV antennas, all our cell phones. Um, AM, FM broadcasts, human beings, no matter where they are on Earth, unless they're in the deepest cave or at the bottom of the ocean, are being bombarded with, literally, at every microsecond, every one of us on this Earth, being bombarded with billions, literally, at every microsecond, every one of our bodies on Earth is being bombarded with billions of different frequencies of EMF. That's not like crazy talk, that's not hyperbole, that's not like uh, conspiracy nonsense. That is 100% empirical, hardcore, undeniable, pure, unadulterated fact. Undeniable, 100%. The fact that this incommensurable geometry is the antenna for consciousness. People are today crazy. We say, well, we had to blame it on the frequencies that people are receiving from various places. Well, well, people are responsible for their own actions, but it is also too undeniable that we're breeding craziness. I mean, 
there is an old passage, I think it's an Indian one, Native American, I mean, that said, uh, in the end times, human beings will eat poison and uh, fall in love with things that kill themselves. And us human beings are doing exactly that. Um, the fact that each one of our bodies, every microsecond of every day, unless we live in a deep, deep cave or at the bottom of the ocean, is being bombarded with billions of frequencies, transspectral, multispectral frequencies of different amplitude modulations and frequency modulations of any kind and every kind. Yeah, even if you live in the super sub basement, you can open up a shortwave radio and you could pick up lots of stuff. You'd have to go really deep, or really far away. Then actually, where you, you go to the middle of the Gobi Desert, and you could still you'd still be bombarded from space by thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of uh, TV broadcast, um, spy satellite transmissions, GPS transmissions. Um, uh, Spacecom uh, net uh, cell net uh, cell uh, cell network uh, broadcasts, which some of those operate in the 400 megahertz range. All the stuff that interferes with our reception of pure clarity. There's a reason why when people read uh, stuff from like Plato, Plotinus, these people say, "Well, these are people from thousands of years ago." Are so small. modern day people can't even read that stuff and comprehend what they're saying. Most people can't. I mean, I can. But our brains are literally like uh, mashed potatoes. Human beings are, are really zombified. We're kind of going around doing stuff and we don't have clarity of thought. So Human beings are completely incompetent and illiterate into what makes life possible. And what they're doing is they're throwing in an enormous amount of noise into this perfect geometry that water receives. And water is a fractal antenna. That's not my position or my view or my belief. Water, which makes all life possible, is a fractal antenna. And we're bombarding it with garbage and trash on a mega scale. And that's why humanity is self-destructing. Humanity has native primordial agnosis inherently. But putting all that on top of it is the breaking point. So, But anyway, that is my discovery, that water is the perfect incommensurable geometry of both the hyperboloid and the torus. And uh, I got that information while soaking in water, by the way, <laughs> looking for the answers to things, and it just popped into my head, and it's like, wow. And I re-examined it over and over again, and it's like, wow, I can't believe it. As is with all things in nature, is glaringly obvious, staring me in the face. Blatantly obvious, yet we're all too blind to see it, so. Um, just think about that the next time you think about water, if you do think about water at all. And don't mention uh, Emoto's book on water. Yeah, there's a book written about water. I've, I've got it. You know, so have you ever heard of so-and-so's work on water? How yeah, they would talk, uh, talk to, uh, meanly to the water, and they feed it to a plant. They talk nice to the water, and they feed that to a plant. And this one, I mean, I, I know all about all that stuff, so. Uh, <laughs> I've done a lot of experiments on water, some of them very fascinating. I haven't made those in years. I might do some more of them again, but um, water is a fractal antenna. And that specific geometry is, by the Pythagoreans' own wording, the only secret of the Pythagoreans, the incommensurability. And that's the only geometry that uh, encapsulates perfect incommensurability. There is no other geometry that encapsulates perfect incommensurability. And that's, of course, why this triangle and triplicate makes up the Pythagorean pentagram. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. I hope it made you think. Thank you so much for watching. If you like any of these, you can click on one of the links below. I don't sell anything other than some fine leather goods. So I'll never be made to feel bad about, you know, working my hands to the bone on making fine leather goods. So thanks. Bye.